Another lesson here from the Yalak Study Notes Torah Commentary, Friday, June 26, 2020. Reading from Isaiah 40, verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. My title is Shh, No Fallen Angels. The Prophet is really letting us know that the Most High set the luminaries in the sky and that's where they remain. That's how he made them to be. They exist up there in the heavens and that's their place so if you see stars moving on the earth something is biblically wrong with that now you've got these people who say the stars fell and continue to fall there are comets burnt out planets and burnt out suns and burnt out stars and galaxies that collide and planets split off and so on and they fall to the earth or to the moon and hit and make craters and so on and some say these planets and stars are angels you hear about the wandering planets or wandering stars they're angels and some of them came down to the earth so instead of the stars being up in the skies they're on the earth some of them and they tell you that from time to time they still continue to descend onto the earth. But the prophet says, no way. Now the Most High says here through the prophet, not one of them faileth. So they do not burn out according to what the prophet is saying that God told him. They do not burn out and just fall to the earth. You see them streaking through the skies. He says, no, they do not fail, not one of them. So this brings into question all the space and scientific knowledge on earth that stars fall and comets are falling from burnt out whatever in the skies. And the biblical teachings, even of Enoch, the extra biblical teachings, that tell us that Enoch said that God told him, revealed to him, that hundreds of angels, maybe 200 or so, including Azazel, probably some top military angel, came down. And they landed upon Mount Hermon over in the east. And they have been plaguing earth with all their sins. But the prophet says that is a lie. So Enoch is now in doubt. Let's look at Psalm 33, verse 6. Then 9 to 11, see what it says. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. 9 to 11. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. Even their teachings through signs and space agencies that the stars are coming down to the earth all the time. Big deception. And the Baba teachers teaching you that these stars are angels that come down to the earth. He says here, he makes their devices to none effect, their trickery to none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. So when he thought to place these luminaries in the sky, 
it remains to all generations in the skies. He says in verse 6, He spake and it was done. And we know in the book of Genesis, He said, let there be, let there be. And He created all these different things. He said, let there be. Let there exist and let there remain. Another scripture says He made the earth to be inhabited. So same idea that what He is doing should last. If you make your car and you're driving down the street and the tires fall off and go flat on the ground, is something wrong with your car and what you did? And it wasn't done well because it's not supposed to just fall off. So if the Creator put the stars up in the sky and they keep falling onto earth and people have to be dodging them, is something wrong with what God did? Or is it right and good what he did? You put up your light bulb in the ceiling and it keeps falling off to the floor and, and smashing on the ground. Is that bad work from the light fixture that you put up and the light bulb you screwed in? So if God puts up the light structures up in the skies and they keep falling down to the earth, even if Enoch told you that's what happened, is that good work from God or bad work? In screwing up the stars up in the heavens. But Genesis 1 kept telling you after he did stuff that it was good. He looked at it and he said it was good. So it was good work. Which means he is fixing them to remain just where he placed them. Not like your Baba teachers tell you that Enoch and others said that the angels are stars that fall to the ground. Because that is not good and goes against the creation story in the Torah. Enoch must be brought into question along with those teachers. Angels do not fall to the earth. So verse 6 from Psalm 33, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made by his word. And it goes on to mention by his breath and his mouth. So he's speaking this stuff and God's word is sure and can accomplish stuff. So if they're falling, then God's word does not have the power to accomplish what he was trying to do. Because the stuff keeps falling down. He commanded and it was done. He spake and it was done. Commanded and it stood fast. Which means stood secure. It's not falling out like the whole light fiction bulb just keep falling down because you're a novice. It stood fast. So he commanded the stars to remain there. And it stood fast. Do you believe the Bible you read? Do you believe the Torah? Or do you believe Enoch and your teachers? So Enoch and all them telling you about the watchers that fell and come down and so on strange story even the New Testament talking about the angels that kept not their first estate saying that they fell makes no sense because he commanded and it stood fast it stays in place so if the Torah is saying he spake and it was done commanded and it stood fast and then Enoch is going to come as well and say that these angels as stars, stars or wandering planets, are falling down to the earth. Why would God reveal that? Why would God tell that to Enoch? I made something and it keeps breaking all the time, keeps falling down to the ground. The light fixtures keep falling down. Wouldn't God be embarrassed to tell Enoch or any of his prophets? that the stuff he's doing don't work right? There isn't even any warranty on it. It just don't work right, he don't provide warranty. Like God don't know what he's doing, even though the book says that he said it was good, it was good, it was good. And the evening and the morning were the first day, were the second day and so on. God said it was good. 
You notice how difficult it is to understand, quote unquote, God, the more the Bible goes on. But it seems that the first part that says he created this, he created that, and so on, seemed like that was fine, for the most part, it seems. But the more the book goes on, the more questions we have. God is not at all embarrassed to tell Enoch, look what I did. It seems this God don't have no shame. He makes a nation and it don't work right. To leave a Moses to tell him, look, if you smash that, you better smash me too. Don't try to make no nation out of me. So this God seems to be coming into question all the time from people who will think and size up the whole situation because what he does don't work out right. He can't make the nation. Moses said, you cannot just destroy these people. The nations of the earth will laugh at you. And nobody wants to laugh at the same God who made the stars as luminaires to give light upon the earth. And they keep falling down. You buy a house and all the light fixtures start falling down one by one. Every day you come home, another one fell down. You don't call back the builders and say, hey, what's going on? But you just accept it from Enoch and the other teachers that this is God's handiwork when David said the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament is handiwork how are they going to declare if the stuff is falling down does that let you praise God when the stuff is falling down but some of you still praise him when the stuff is falling down because you do not have eyes to see and ears to understand what is being taught by people who teach you these crazy stuff and your mind cannot reach understanding you do not praise the God like that and his stuff is falling down because he cannot hold up your life and your future because then his work would then have a proven track record of not being good it has no staying power so either you have to accept that the book says he commanded and it stood fast or you say God is a liar and Enoch is true that the angels or stars keep falling down to the ground you can't just keep following your teachers just because they're a teacher or because the first time you heard them teach to pull you in to the Bible that message was so nice and it touched your heart but then you just accept everything else they say after that you don't want to find God you just want to find their building to keep learning from them where you guys meet that where you guys meet that you're not looking for God you're looking for people you're looking for a church address you're looking for a camp address you're looking for a group you are not looking for the Creator It's funny, I was looking at the word search the other day because the Bible keeps telling you to seek, seek, seek for God and search and so on. And you know, when you look at the word search, it has this idea of something rocking and moving in and out of place and just like it's wandering, it's going back and forth because you're searching. Like you're looking for your keys and you open this drawer, it's not there. You open that drawer, you lift up the cushions and you everywhere you go, and you check the kitchen and you go whatever and you check by the front door. You're not staying in any one spot. But you go and you sit in your congregation for years and say you're looking for God. When people are looking for stuff, they do not stay in the same spot all the time. They keep moving around because that's what it is to search. So when God says in the Bible to search for him, that's it. You're, you're moving back and forth. Yeah, you might get hooked for a little bit inside of a group. But if you are searching, you're not going to remain there and you don't succumb to guilt that they put on you because you are searching you move in and out you're there let them curse you that you're leaving and you're going wherever you are then being obedient to the scriptures because you are searching and you can't stay here i'm searching and i can't be fed right here i'm searching and this doesn't feed me anymore i am searching that's why the most i looks at the same congregation teachers and the same leaders and he says they have destroyed my flock woe be to the pastors they do not feed my sheep so I will come and seek and search and find them myself and I will feed them myself and I will lead them myself. How can he say that when there are so many congregations all over in different denominations, different religious settings, 
different religious beliefs that are feeding the people and leading the people and he says they are not being fed they are not being led he looks at all those congregations all those meetings all those groups and he said I have to go and find them myself I gotta go and search and find them because he's finding a problem with the groups that they are in no one seeketh after God they seek after man after systems after groups that's what they seek after they seek after teachers but they forget the Lord God and they have replaced their God with a teacher and then you tell me you know the Torah your knowledge is as good as what falls from the skies to the earth it is of no use that's why Isaiah said the righteousness is as filthy rags how can you be a prophet of God and call righteousness filthy rags think about that one for yourself filthiness eloquent the most learned teachers access to many books to many other mouths and minds who have more experiences than them in the world and more knowledge of what to teach on this or that topic so they can learn a whole lot more to come back and teach you but filthy rags could only come from filthy direction that comes from filthy teaching that's what God thinks about a lot of what he sees on the earth even though these people say we come in the name of the Lord so now you might want to say to me yeah but what about that famous verse you don't like Enoch because he's extra biblical he's not one of the 66 but you say, what about Isaiah 14, 12? That's in the Torah, the regular accepted Torah. And that says Lucifer fell. Well, let's read it. Because the book says the stuff does not fail because they are established by his word and they remain there forever. So Lucifer cannot be an angel that fell from the skies down to the earth. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? And then it goes on saying, eventually you're going to look at this man and say, Is this the man, like they taught us in the Christian church, is this the man, Satan, that did all this to the world and locked up his prisoners in prisons and wouldn't let them out and so on? That right there, Lucifer, how they've fallen from heaven, that's what we today would call Babylon that's wreaking havoc on earth heaven is their place of power or glory on the earth but when they are destroyed they will come crashing down to the ground it's not that they are actually an angel or it's lucifer is like some real angel that is a star up in heaven that comes crashing down to the ground it just means this is babylon the wicked kingdom that's gonna be losing its power and it comes crashing down to nothing People are going to look at him and say, Babylon is done for. This is Lucifer. Because the real stars up in the sky from Genesis chapter 1 when they were, were created, they remain in place by the word of his what? Power! So Enoch is leading you astray. The space agencies, the Bible agencies, the Hebrew agencies telling you that stars are coming down upon Mount Hermon and so on Azazel and all of them it's just a big deception because religion is a game but a dangerous game playing with your soul let's run to Genesis 1 15 so it's talking about the creating of the luminaries down in the sky the lights and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so 
So now he spake and it was done, commanded and it stood fast, or it remained in the purpose and place where he placed it to function by his word. So it can't do other than his word because it is his word that powers it. And it was so to give light upon the earth, not to come down upon mountains because that is not the commandment. You know these things in nature just want to fulfill the commandments of the creator but man keeps trying to not do his commandment and tries to teach lies. So now if I go down some more now it says in verse 17 and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. No, did it say it saw that God saw that they were out of place? God's walking around in the garden. Wait, what's that star doing down on the ground? I thought I placed it up in the sky. No. Because once he set them there, they remained in place. So Enoch is a liar. And he's wasting your time every time you read his book. So it says he placed them to rule over the day and over the night. But we're in the heavens, like it just said. So if they are on the earth, rolling around or running around on two legs with some supposed wings, then how can those stars rule over the day and over the night when they're on the ground, running around? Running down from mountain tops, Mount Hermon and Mount Sinai and Mount everywhere else. And roaming around all the earth after they come down from mountains. They are not ruling over the day and the night. The ruling over the day and the night of the luminaries take place from in the skies, not upon mountain tops or on the ground. They do not crash into the earth if you are going to go by biblical teaching. And again, it said it was good. The work that the stars do, the sun and the moon, he said it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So he's closing that part off because it worked just like he wanted it to work. It didn't fall out like your light fixture out hang down with the electrical wire and you got to try to put it back up and screw it back on and so on. Because what God does is good. Now let's run over to Isaiah 65 verse 11. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for the troop, for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Why do we have lying teachings in Israel today? Because they furnished a table for the lying teachers that worship other gods and Israel bought into idolatry. If you're putting it in a biblical setting. And Israel continues to teach the lies today, including that angels came down from heaven and fell with Azazel upon Mount Hermon, 200 of them. Because they furnished a table full of lies to welcome expert liars, to teach them more lies, so that they could learn how to better lie to the rest of the nation and to make it more difficult for Israel to get out of the lies. They were trained by the best and then they took over and became more skillful than the best of the liars. Israel perfected the wickedness of the heathen and the lies of them. Now let's look at how ridiculous this is that the stars are coming down as angels to the earth and crashing into the earth upon a mountain. Isaiah 10 verse 15 Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? 
or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up. Or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. And might I add, as if the stars should move themselves out of place and come down upon mountains on the earth and tell the creator, I don't want to be up here anymore. I'm going to earth. I'm going on a long vacation. Read what the prophet said. The one who is doing the work, chopping the wood, has power over the wood. Whatever he does to the wood is what happens. Whatever the creator does to the stars is what happens. And by the word of his power, he said, you will stay here and give light upon the earth and rule over the day and the night. They do not have power to come down to the earth upon mountains. Your teachers have forgotten the name and the word and the truth of the Lord. Why do you still follow them? Because you have been hooked by deception instead of by the truth of the Lord. You do not know God. So, if the Creator put the stars up in the skies, no Enochian agency, space agency, or Hebrew agency can tell you that they come down to the earth. Stars do not shine on earth, they shine in heaven. They do not do their work on earth, they do it from in the heavens. That's where he put them. Now let's read again now the first verse I read to open this up and then close with that. Again, Isaiah 40 and verse 26, and now you will understand that your teachers are deceiving you. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. If they fail and fall to the ground, then he does not have might. The creator does not have power. The God of Israel then cannot deliver you out of your bondage because he does not have the power to do all these different things that the Bible says he did. But if you can still believe that they remain in the sky, then maybe you still have a bridge to faith in order to understand that you can then get your deliverance, which is shaping up even now. Africa changing name of Indian Ocean to African Ocean. You understand? Now, how come these people in Africa tell you that, oh, they're under the white man's power and they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't break out? But they're going to rename the whole Indian Ocean? Don't you see Africa has more power than they're letting you on? Because the stars are letting them know what time it is. The luminaries are letting them know that it is time. Your deliverance, like I told you back to Egypt, and I told you you're coming out, it's working up even now in front of your very faces. Out of Egypt, your exodus is working on the earth right now. In your lifetime, it is beginning to work. Because by the word of his power that you can count on, it continues to shape up everything to bring you out. He set them in place up in the skies and not one faileth. So not one come down to the earth and not one of these comets are coming down as angels and so on. Whatever Enoch is saying and teaching. So not one faileth Adar from the Hebrew to be lacking, fail, to leave lacking. So they're not going to leave the heaven lacking their presence. Right? They're not going to just come down. Oh, look at this. Primitive root. Arranged as a battle, a vineyard, to hoe, to miss, and so on. Or to find wanting, to fail. Basically, keeping rank. So he's saying that they keep their rank. None faileth. They keep their rank. They stay in place. They do not come down with Azazel upon Mount Hermon. But do not tell anyone this. Shh. There are no fallen angels.